To discuss athletes and activism, we now welcome in Willie Banks, a two-time Olympian triple jumper whose best shot at a gold medal got wiped out by the U.S. boycott at the Moscow Games, and now the president of the U.S. Olympians Association. Holly Swire is a Ph.D. in anthropology who teaches, among other classes, the anthropology of sports at Lake Forest College in Chicago, and Dave Zirin, author and sports editor of The Nation magazine. Dave, what do you expect American NBA players to actually do at the Olympics? Well, first of all, I expect Jerry Colangelo and Coach Mike Krzyzewski to try to carefully stage manage the situation. Coach Krzyzewski has said explicitly that politics have no place at the Olympics and athletics have no place connected with politics. But that being said, I think we could be in for some surprises. We heard about Kobe Bryant and the PSA he's done. We've heard about LeBron James is now starting to say something about Darfur. And I'll tell you something, when Kobe was having his legal trouble in 2005, he took to wearing a Muhammad Ali t-shirt. LeBron James, in an interview with ESPN, said his goal in life was to be a global icon like Muhammad Ali. So we could be in for some surprises. They're setting the bar high for themselves. Willie, as the president of the U.S. Olympians Association, you are meeting with the athletes who are going to compete in Beijing. What are you telling them about activism and protests? Well, each of the athletes have to be on their, they have their own individual say on what they want, what they're going to say about uh, political um, activities. But we really would like to make sure that they understand that the Olympic Games is for them to compete, to, to do the best they can for the U.S. and, and to make themselves uh, heroes to the community back in home. Holly, why are athletes today so reluctant to speak up? I think there's a couple of different things to look at here. One is, of course, the earnings potential question. And you think about it, an athlete gets to be my age and they're old. You know, they don't have a long career, uh, a long time in a career uh, in order to develop their earnings potential. So, of course, they're going to be concerned about that. They don't have as many opportunities as someone in another field might have. But another piece of the puzzle, if you think about, uh, we're living in a post-9-11, post-Columbine world, and that's the age in which these athletes came of age. And they've been taught conflict resolution, walk a mile in another person's shoes before you make a decision or make a claim or make any sort of statement on something. So I think it's interesting that LeBron James, for example, says, I wanted to find out more before I took a stand. I think that's going to be more and more common among people of this age group. And there's certainly a difference between what's at stake for superstars versus unknown amateurs. But either way, Dave, who cares what an athlete says about Darfur or Tibet? Well, the thing is, it's deeply interwoven in the American fabric. I mean, there's a reason why we associate the early years of the civil rights movement with Jackie Robinson or Muhammad Ali with the struggle against the war in Vietnam or Billie Jean King with the women's rights movement. We've seen repeatedly throughout history the way politics can ricochet into the field of athletics with absolutely electric results. And because of that, in times when there is a lot of dissatisfaction, like in this country right now, people look to athletes. People look to people with cultural capital who actually have a platform even if it is a hyper-exalted, unhealthy, brought to you by Nike platform, they want to hear what athletes have to say. Willie, what does it matter? Well, here's the thing that I think we're missing is that it's not necessarily the, the people, the community looking at the athletes and wanting them to be heroes. I think the, the fact that the media follows our athletes and then tries to make them politically active, that's what I think is causing the rift that we're looking at today. Many of the athletes have a particular... Uh, charity or something that they really feel strongly about but when they're trying to be the best they can be trying to be an Olympic gold medalist they have to focus on the training and so it's very difficult for them to get involved in an activity outside once they retire you will see a lot of Olympians jumping and doing things okay, can I jump in here real quick sure because I think it's actually the opposite as Willie. A lot of athletes have attempted to speak out politically in recent years, and the ones I talk to, they think they hit an absolute iron wall when it comes to the media, that the media doesn't want to hear what they have to say. I mean, even a short list of athletes who've come out against the war in Iraq is pretty impressive in the NBA. Steve Nash, Eton Thomas, Donald Foyle, uh, Josh Howard, Nick Van Exel. But there's no effort to try to consolidate and listen to what athletes think. There's way too much shut up and play. You signed a contract. You're just here to play. We don't want to hear it. Holly, you teach college students every day. What do they say about what athletes say? Well, I hear two different perspectives. One of the things that I hear a lot from my students is sports are supposed to be an escape. So there's a lot of resentment of when politics get brought into sports for that reason. The same time, though, I hear them speaking very uh, highly of Muhammad Ali and Tommy Smith and John Carlos. And what I see them understanding is 
sports is sports is where we teach values and when it makes it a very potent field for making a political statement and we we teach kids from a very young age the ideas of a level playing field playing fair in sports so when things start happening rippling in sports it has it threatens the status quo in a lot of ways more than in other arenas and so people are paying really close attention to sports and it gets a little scary when sports get involved and I think that's where we get that shut up and play attitude and Willie you were the one who was personally affected by the uh, the crossing paths of politics and sports how did that impact your life in 1980 well I think that's part of it I want to go back to the other gentleman's uh, statement athletes will get involved but it's it's just like we're a community and maybe five percent of that community are very politically active and they want to speak out and that's what that's what happens in every community and that's what, same in sports now in 1980 I went crazy I mean I was protesting I was picketing Carter's uh, campaign headquarters because I wanted to go to the Olympic Games and I wanted to compete because that was my shot to be a famous athlete and so I wanted to do that uh, it's 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 something that's when it's personal like that you will get involved if it's something happening outside your universe it's tough to really get emotional and get involved in something that like, like that with your whole heart Holly what should the Olympics be Oh, that's a tough question um, they always have been political They've been political from the get-go. They originally started as, a, as an avenue to sort of think about world peace. Um, and that always brings people into conflict and leads to a, a questions about what does it mean, whose peace are we having? Um, and I think we see that same question emerging right now with Beijing. Whose rules are we following? What are the rules of fair, fair play and equal opportunity that we regard as sort of the rule uh, of the world, that we want the world to live by? And I think that, that question is what we're deciding in the course of something like the Olympics. Dave, it's last a two-sided sword. Yeah, sorry. sorry. It's a two-sided sword mm -hmm. because you can say don't well, put it in Beijing because it, you know there's there's problems with their human rights, but then you can say let's put it in Beijing so that we can uh, bring attention. We got five seconds so left. Dave, last Beijing. word to you. Yeah, five if seconds. we don't if we don't want athletes to be political, we should just ro watch Rock'em Sock'em Robots or old games on ESPN Classic. Complicated, These are human complicated beings. issues. They demand serious discussion, and we appreciate the three of you joining <laughs> us for this discussion. Willie Banks, Dr. Holly Swires, and and Dave Zirin, thank you for your time on thank Outside you. the Lines. Thank you. Next, it is your turn. We seek outside opinion. One week after OTL reported O.J. Mayo got paid while playing high school and college basketball.